So I realised that when people subscribe to a new YouTube channel, often they don't go through the back catalogue of videos. So there's going to be many new subscribers that don't realise what I've evidenced in the past about Abu Dhabi 2021. I'm going to try and make this as quickly as, as possible. I'm going to show you the audio of what they said to you during those closing laps of Abu Dhabi and expose all of the lies. Many of you will have just seen the hour 12 minute long video where I showed you the visuals, what F1 TV created to show you. Now it's what Brundle and Crofty said in their lies to you. So using track of view, we are at the point where Nicholas Latifi is just about to crash. You can see a blue dot at turn 14. Hamilton here, he is between turn eight and turn nine. So where I'm trying to wave my cursor now. And if you look at the other cars on the track, the next car down the track from Hamilton is this orange dot of Lando Norris. If you look down this list on the right hand side of the screen, Lando Norris is in eighth position and the leader, Lewis Hamilton, has lapped him because Norris is the car next down the road, which means Norris and every car down past Norris has been lapped. OK, that's the way it works. So it's very easy to identify. Despite the fact that in the aftermath, Brundle told us just how hard it is to even identify who the lapped cars are. Very simple. Norris is the first car that's been lapped there. So every car that's below Norris has already been lapped. What you need to understand, the mandatory rules with the safety car are such that when the safety car is deployed, it nullifies the race. All of the advantages that have been built up prior to it being deployed they are wiped out. That's what happens. OK, you see all of the cars bunched back together. All the advantages are wiped out. The safety car regulations, when they relate to lapped cars, all they do is reset the restart condition when cars have been lapped. So you look at this situation again, Norris, the orange dot. Further up the road from Norris is Gasly, this grey dot. So Norris is a, currently in eighth. Gasly is currently in seventh. They both move up, move up a place when Perez retires. OK, so they move into sixth and seventh, respectively, when Perez retires. But actually, the time gap between Norris and Gasly is less than 12 seconds. It's less than the time gap between Hamilton and Verstappen. Now, OK, Verstappen's here, OK, coming to turn six. But that's a slow part of the track. So by the time... You, you will see where Hamilton is when Verstappen gets to where Norris is. OK, you'll see that approximately where when Verstappen gets to where Norris is, Hamilton be, be actually roughly where Gasly is now. That's the way it works. So Norris is closer to Gasly. When the safety car is deployed, the safety car will pick up Hamilton. Gasly will have the chance of disappearing off around that track and joining the end of the snake. You cannot allow Gasly to virtually gain a lap on Norris just because Latifi's crashed. So the regulation is those lapped cars get released. They get given at least one further lap of that, that track with which to catch the back of the pack to restore sporting fairness to all competitors. That's the regulations. Nobody has told you that. Why? Ask yourself why nobody has ever told you that. In everything that you've ever seen, Post Abu Dhabi, not one form of media has ever exposed that. Why? I'll tell you why, because by exposing it, it completely exposes the fraud, completely exposes the fix. But that is the purpose of 48.12. That's entirely the purpose. Backed up by the FIA International Sporting Code. But they lie. Anyway. With that in mind, apply this to any single Grand Prix of you that you like. If there is an incident that requires the intervention of a safety car, the only way you will see racing is if there are lapped cars in situ, then those lapped cars have to be released two laps before the final lap. Because then on that, that lap that's two laps before the final lap, it leaves the penultimate lap as being that mandatory lap that has to be afforded those release cars with which to attempt to catch the back of the pack. And that is the only way then you can go racing on that last lap of the race. So in Abu Dhabi, that meant 
that those lapped cars had to be released by the end of lap 56 so that lap 57 could be mandatory safety car lap. And that is the only way that lap 58 could be a racing lap. And if that could not be accomplished, if those lapped cars could not be released by the end of lap 56, that race would be a safety car finish. There is no alternative. You cannot resume racing with lapped cars in situ. That's an entire lie because the outcomes for all of the drivers are entirely skewed. Entirely skewed. Like I say, Norris, uh, he is now left a lap behind Gasly. That's not fair. OK, um, these cars that are, for example, um, Sebastian Vettel, look how far he is behind Charles Leclerc. He will be right on the back of Charles Leclerc. So he'll have, he'll have gained. Perez would be right on the back. Well, he, he well, he wouldn't because actually Perez is not challenging Stroll. Stroll would have um, closed up to Vettel. So there have been numerous competitors been able to gain on the people that they were competing against and then be the likes of Norris and those that are behind Norris lost all that ground on Gasly. You can't afford it. You can't play it out like that. These conditions don't apply uniformly to all the competitors. And sport is contested in a fair manner under rules that apply to all competitors. So everybody is impacted in the same way. The race is neutralised for everybody. OK, not just, oh, but you, but you can separate out the just first and second and see who wins a one lap race between first and second. Oh, one's on one sort of co compound attire, one's on the other. Oh, let's see who wins that one. That's a fair way of settling a Grand Prix, isn't it? No, not in any way, shape or form. No way whatsoever. No argument. However. This is what this sport said to you real time before this so-called error. They're lying to you about the rules of the sport. They're lying to you about different possibilities. They are disorientating you. They are confusing you before the so-called error. That demonstrates they are conditioning your mind to believe in all sorts of different possibilities. Here goes. Regulation changes. Well, that feels like a long time ago, doesn't it? But yes, Mercedes had an awful pre-season test, didn't they? We thought uh, they would be in terrible trouble come the first race. Oh no! Nicholas Latifi has crashed, and I. Okay, they've announced that he's crashed. We saw Hamilton. Where Verstappen is now? That's about where Hamilton was at the time of the actual crash. You can see the lag in terms of him crashing, and the delay in the commentators mentioning in that. So at that point in time, Hamilton had less than half a lap remaining of his lap 53, meaning it was about 0.4 of that lap remaining. He then had five further laps. The data says there is approximately, on average, five and a half laps of racing lost in situations where there is a safety car deployed and cars have been lapped. Five and a half laps, elapse before you can resume racing. The data says it is highly unlikely we are going to see any racing. As such, Mercedes did not pit Hamilton. That's a valid decision. You would not risk losing track position if the data says it's unlikely that you're going to see racing. The fact that Red Bull could because they were not in jeopardy of losing positions. Well, that's, ne that's neither here nor there. The narrative will be entirely about tyre strategy. They do not mention anything to do with what I've explained to you has to be accomplished. And that is the lapped cars have to be released by the end of lap 56. Because if they're not, it's going to be a safety car finish. Here we go. I think that is at turn 14 That'll where we saw car. Kimi Raikkonen a uh, crash in practice it is at turn 14 and yes that will be a safety car because marshals are going to need to recover that williams and to work on it and this now completely changes the context of this race if they can clear the williams in time and we can have a couple of laps racing to the checkered flag couple of laps racing to the checkered flag i've just told you what the data is five and a half laps there's 5.4 laps remaining at the, at the time of the crash. 
if we can have a couple of laps. That's a false narrative. There's bound to be a couple, and of course... That false narrative. Bound to be a couple. There's, there's, there's not bound to be a couple. That's where Max Verstappen's much fresher tyres will fire up. Straight away, get you thinking about the tyres. Max is currently on hard compound tyres that he, ch he, was, he changed onto them during that virtual safety car period. Still on old hard compound tyres that have been worn. They're not going to fire up that much quicker than the hard compound tyres that Lewis is on. And give him the confidence on any kind of restart. It depends on uh, there will be. I'm pretty sure on lap 52, obviously because of the slow. 53. Now Ham look where Hamilton is. Hamilton is on lap 54. No pace with five to go. That uh, they'll probably have a, a lap or two as long as they get it. I've told you the data. The teams know the data. They get a vehicle on there and get that out of the way. And, and Max coming into hit. the pits, Max Verstappen. Hamilton stays out. Verstappen coming into the pits. And I would imagine there's a set of soft tyres waiting for him to go on to that Red Bull car. Yes, it is. Box. F1 TV, choose this message to play to you. Straight away, this builds in to the tyre narrative. Brundle has said, this is where Max's much fresher tyres will fire up. OK, now he's got the new tyres. You are being shown this on the telly, Max Pitting. F1 TV are interjecting with this message. Oh, I can't box for fresh tyres from, from Lewis. This is what they are leading you to believe. They're not mentioning they could, what it actually is, the criteria required to take place in order for us to see any racing at all. They don't mention that. This sport needs to be conducted in accordance with the rules. What are those rules? What are the only conditions which enable us to see racing? Negative. Right, so if there is a restart, Verstappen now has fresh, soft tyres. Lewis has heavily used hard compound tyres. He will, they will let any lap runners through. The use of any. They will let any lap runners through. Rather strange term there, Martin. They will let the lap runners through. The lap runners will be released and allowed to catch the back of the pack before we can go racing or given that mandatory safety car lap before we go racing. Or is it they will let any? Because then after the event becomes this Red Bull argument of any doesn't mean all. On the safety car restart and uh, he will presumably end up it's the second time he's used the word restart. Second time he's used the word restart. Uh, well, they had nothing to lose. Once again, Red Bull had nothing to lose there. Red Bull had nothing to lose. That won't be the first time you hear that either. Red Bull had nothing to lose. They have nothing to lose. Hamilton is a long way clear as Perez also pits, as we can see, and there's quite a few coming into the pits. Hamilton's a long way clear on the track, but I rather get the feeling by the time he comes around to the main straight, he's not going to be able to pit and stay ahead of Max Verstappen. That chance uh, wasn't there or has gone by for Mercedes. Verstappen tucked up behind Sebastian Vettel in the Aston Martin yeah, there. But he won't be on the restart. But he won't be on the restart. Wow. So look, we're on lap 54 of 58 here. They've right. But he won't be on the restart. Are we going to get restarted? What needs to happen if, we ab if we're able to see a restart? What do the regulations state? What needs to happen? And what is that cutoff? I'll tell you what the cutoff is. End of lap 56. If those lapped cars aren't released by then, it's a safety car finish. What do you tell us about that? Got to clear that debris away and the fire extinguishers have obviously gone off because the brakes, I'm sure, were getting very, very hot. But they've also got to let the lapped cars unlap themselves. Absolutely right, Crofty. Just at the back of my mind, I wonder if we're going to get any racing laps in this race. Wait. What's the data, Crofty? You've got your race notes. You know what the data is. Last week in Saudi Arabia... OK, when I'm talking 2021, the week before this event that they commentated on, the week before in Saudi Arabia, three and one sixth laps elapsed between Mick Schumacher crashing 
and that race being red flagged. Three and one sixth laps, which would equate to over three and a half laps of this circuit, because that is a longer track. Over three and a half laps went by before they determined whether or not the track was safe. They did the clear up operation and then the clerk of the course must have looked at it and said, well, no, it's still not safe. Just to clear that up. And that wasn't with debris on the track. That was just a car that had gone into a barrier. Three and a half laps of this and then release the lapped cars and then give them an extra lap of the safety car. Well, if you release them after three and a half laps, effectively you're, that's four laps gone because you've released them on that fourth lap and that lap fifth lap, you give them that lap to catch the back of the, the, the pack, race over. What's going to happen here? See, this is what happened uh, to Nicholas Latifi. Uh, he was scrapping away with uh, with Mick Schumacher. That's not the corner he crashed on, is it? That was uh, earlier on, I think, uh, in the uh, in the skirmish with Schumacher. They they barged wheels. When See, all these advantages are just being wiped out, out as all these cars bunch. It's off the track. Would have picked up a bit of dust and debris on his tyres, and then the rear just. Let's go. Probably dirty tyres from being offline there. Will, they, will we get any more racing laps or not? What jeopardy at the end of this Grand Prix, the end of this World Championship. Will there be any more racing laps? If there are, then Verstappen has got the tyres to... Re the tyre narrative is all about the tyres now. Rather than keep asking the questions, will there be any more racing laps? Tell us the conditions under which we will see those racing laps. Why are you not able to do so? Really do something with them. Will they let the lap runners through? Well, uh, they, they always do. Why is Martin Brundle asking you, will they let the lap runners through? The rules changed back in 2012. Martin is asking you, will they let the lap runners through? Well, they have done in 198 Grand Prix under these the regulations. Every time there's been a safety car deployed in those 198 Grand Prix and cars have been lapped, they let them through. Why is that? Because the regulations state that that's what you have to do. And then they have been given that mandatory safety car lap with which to attempt to catch the back of the pack. Martin... Is saying, oh, will they do that this time? As if the, the option is there not to do it. And he'll claim that the regulations don't state that you have to. The regulations are worded saying, if it is safe to do so, the lapped cars, and the message is given to the lapped cars, they will be required to pass the leader in the safety car, and the safety car will return to the pits at the end of the following lap. Which means, if it's not safe to do so, what you do is you carry on lapping behind that safety car. The safety car is on track because you are dealing with a safety incident. When it becomes safe to do so, you carry out the procedure of releasing the lapped cars. If it is not safe to do so, you carry on lapping behind the safety car. The purpose of that safety car being to try and make things as safe as possible until the track is declared safe and then you carry out those mandatory procedures before you go racing again because they have to be carried out to achieve that condition before you resume racing. Very simple, but they lie to you. They try to confuse you. They try to disorientate you. They don't tell you that that is the purpose of the regulation. Let the lap runners through, and in between Hamilton and Verstappen, Norris, Alonso, Ocon, Leclerc, and Vettel. They list the five that ultimately get released. Yes, but if they do that, it extends the safety car period. It doesn't extend the safety car period. The safety car period is what it is. It takes as long as it takes. It's not an extension of it. It is what it is. But that's what they always do, take the yeah. lap runners out of the way so they're not interfering in play. That's not the purpose. It's not 
taking them out of the way so they don't interfere in play. It is restoring sporting fairness to all competitors. Lando Norris. Where is Pierre Gasly now? Pierre Gasly's down here at turn nine. Lando Norris is behind Lewis Hamilton. OK, Lando Norris has lost all that ground. By the time this field is bunched, Gasly will be at the back of it. Norris will be behind Hamilton. You cannot resume racing like that. It's nothing to do with getting them out of the way so they don't interfere with the leaders. In Brazil, 2019, Pierre Gasly had been lapped. He was released, given two laps of the trap with which to catch the back of the, the uh, pack. Did so, ended up finishing second in that race. I didn't think he was allowed to interfere with the race between the leaders. They are lying to you. What's the situation behind So, the situation is, uh, Verstappen has pitted. He had a free pit stop. We would have lost track position to him. Four laps remaining when you cross the line. So, this bump field has to bunch, and then they have to send lap cars through. So, it may not restart. Is he right behind me? He will be. Once they've sorted out all the order, this is going to take a while to sort out. There might be one with new tyres. Uh, copy, Lewis. We would have lost track position if we had pitted. Again, F1 TV choose to play that message. It still builds into the tyre narrative, but it also gives a nod to what we know needs to happen. We know it needs to happen because anybody that's watched Formula One for any period of time has seen that happen on multiple occasions. So they have to acknowledge that you, the audience, know this, OK? But they still build in the tyre narrative. If they just railroaded this down without acknowledging that, it's easier for people to just clearly say, you, you ignored all that. By, by doing it this way, they build in this narrative, oh, there's confusion. Everything seems to be going a bit wrong here. Oh, it's a pressurised situation. Oh, everybody was under pressure and it got confusing. And, you know, there was some sort of an agreement and nobody kind of knew. It's a narrative. They constructed it this way so that that is the excuse they gave to you. Remember this. Teams cannot agree to a certain ending in a game. That's result manipulation. Teams cannot agree to the final ending in a penalty shootout. The referee is not allowed to manufacture a penalty shootout. It happens organically. It either ends in a draw, requiring the game to go into a shootout, or it doesn't. The referee cannot misapply the rules to gift one of the teams a goal to make sure the game ends level so that that penalty shootout then happens. That's corruption. That's sport fixing, result manipulation. So teams cannot have an agreement for a certain ending. You have to apply the rules and see what they produce. And that was the big key here. Mercedes, for the second time, keeping Lewis Hamilton out whilst Max Verstappen pitted. Red Bull had nothing to lose. Tire narrative, Red Bull had nothing to lose. Hamilton potentially losing track position. And in this case, if we don't go racing again because you can't overtake under the safety car, he would have lost the world championship. Again, listen to how they word. And in this case, if... We don't go racing again because you can't overtake under the safety car. Hamilton would have lost the world championship. How about you say, if we don't go racing again, Lewis Hamilton will become a record-breaking eight-time world champion. Instead, you are, you are turning everybody's thoughts to the notion of us being able to resume racing. You've never once suggested... If we don't go racing now, what is going to be the outcome? If we don't go racing and the data says we're not going to go racing, Lewis Hamilton is on course to become a record-breaking eight-time world champion. 
what is going to determine whether we go racing or not. Well, that determined is going to be determined by how quickly this incident can be cleared up. Can we have a look at what is going on live at turn 14 so we can assess how long it's going to be for this incident to be cleared up? If you check my other video out where you see the visuals, you don't see very much of what of live of what is going on there. Instead, it's all replays and it's cut into the pits and it's it's showing you the pictures of Mercedes pit crew and the tyres that they couldn't fit onto Lewis Hamilton's car. Is there a vehicle pulling the Williams out of the way or not? Show us the pictures rather than ask and pretend you don't know. In your commentary booth, you've got multiple monitors. You can be making sure they show you what's going on so that you can commentate exactly what's going on to the worldwide audience. Not yet. Can't see it but at I the moment. Ted Downing. We can't see, and neither can we, because you're not showing us. You. Yeah, have a load of other people pitting Yuki Tsunoda, Pierre Gasly, Daniel Ricciardo. Uh, we've had Lance Stroll as well into the pits. I'll give you those orders as they shake out. But uh, yeah, it was, it was just bad luck. I mean, you saw the Mercedes mechanics just hanging around outside the pits, looking at whether they had the order to come in. But Hamilton was so close to the uh, to the pit entrance that uh, it does seem that the engineers right there. Whatever they would have done, they would have lost track position. So Ted builds into the narrative with the tyres and the track position and, oh, yeah, isn't it so, so strange with, with the pitting and the not pitting? And What matters is whether or not this race can be restarted. Has anybody told you that these lapped cars need to be released by the end of lap 56? Otherwise, it's going to be a safety car finish. They've not said that, have they? Why haven't they? That's a basic. That's a basic. What goes on during this period is messages between the teams and the drivers. After just one lap after passing that incident and Latifi's car is still on track with now a load of white powder around it because the fire extinguisher has gone off. Alonso goes by that car and very shortly after goes, we need to unlap now. Come on, we need to get this job done. What is this job? Or else it'd be too late. The drivers know. But you also know that you can't unlap with that situation being how it is. What have these drivers been primed to do? To know that it has to be this racing finish. Why is that? It's a contrivance. It's a contrivance. And all of these teams, the messages between the teams and the drivers are not in accordance with the rules of the sport. And that demonstrates that there is an agreement between those teams to go with whatever is done to ensure a racing end into this event, which is ignoring the rules of the sport to produce a certain ending. That's cheating. That's fraud. That's result manipulation. And all of the teams are complicit with that. They are all complicit with that. The safety car is going, it's not going full gas down the street. His, Copy Lewis, understood. His tyres are cooling. He, he needs more pace, more heat into those tyres. This is awful for Lewis then with those hard compact and heavily used tyres. So. Oh, awful for Lewis with the tyres. Is Lewis complaining about the safety car speed because he's worried about the temperature in his tyres? Or is it for the fact that he's more concerned that this safety car is going slow to eke out the time to ensure that we go racing again. What's he more concerned about? I would suggest he's probably more concerned that this safety car, in his opinion, might be going very slow just to try to ensure that everything gets cleared up and dealt with so they can manufacture this racing lap by going much slower than usual. But how do Brundle and Crofty jump straight on it and go, oh, yeah, I can see that Lewis can be upset about this because um, it, it's going to affect his tyres, isn't it? Uh, there's the shunt then that caused the safety. It has to be a safety car there. And uh, But will they, will they let the lap runners through? I don't think it's... Second time he said that. Second time he's proposed the notion of not having to let the lapped cars through. And they've done it ever since 2012. 
198 Grand Prix have been contested under those regulations. This is the end of the 10th full season under those regulations. And Brundle is proposing something that's not allowed. Absolutely mandatory, uh, but that's normally on a wet day that they... Gaslighting you. It's mandatory and the weather conditions are irrelevant. Oh, I don't think it's mandatory, but that's normally on a wet day. Embellishing the lie. Lies. Don't. Um, and if so, how long... Give me an example in the last 10 seasons from the start of the 2012 season to the end of the 2021 season, Brundle, where the lapped cars aren't released on a wet day. You won't be able to give me an example of that because it didn't happen. You are lying. How long will they wait for those lap cars to get out? I'll tell you how long we will wait, Brundle. They will be released when that safety car is then crosses the start finish line at the end of the lap that they're released on. It will stay on track for a further lap, enabling those released cars the opportunity to catch the back of the pack. That is the regulations. That is the minimum requirement. On four occasions, Michael Massey, as race director, has kept that safety car on track for a further lap beyond the mandatory safety car lap to ensure that those release cars fully caught the back of the pack. We know it is one full lap beyond the lap they are released on. That is the minimum requirement. You are saying, how long will we wait? As if the question is, oh, can we just let them go and then start racing? Not in any way, shape or form. Not in any way, shape or form. Get out of the way. If they wait for them to catch the pack up, which they don't have to do, nope. then um, I don't think we're going to... Nope. Straight away, the, the, the confirmation from Crofty, Crofty. The regulations don't state that they have to catch the back of the pack. But what we do know is if they are released, say, halfway around the lap, one and a half laps, which is the half of the lap remaining that they're released on, and then a further full lap, is often enough for them to catch the back of the pack. So they, that, that's usually enough. If it's very late in the lap, then that's the sorts of situations where Massey has kept the safety car on track for a further lap. OK, so whilst the regulations don't state that, that's the intention. And it's certainly the intention so that after that procedure, Norris here isn't left cast further adrift from Gasly than he previously was prior to the crash. You wouldn't want to leave Norris more than 12 seconds behind because he's then been left disadvantaged due to that crash. And ideally, you want him bunched up with all of the field bunched up, nose to tail in the correct race order. OK, everything's been neutralised. We're good to go racing again. That's what it's for. They want to discard a competitor just because the leader has, made, has come round and lapped him. They're all still in a race with each other. They're all still fighting for position. Norris should have had the opportunity to fight Gasly for that sixth position. He wasn't allowed to do so. Carlos Sainz in third should have had the opportunity to fight Max Verstappen for second position in that race. He wasn't given the opportunity to do so because two cars were left in place, preventing him from being on the back of Max Verstappen when that race got restarted. That is why the regulations are what they are. So you do not get skewed outcomes like that get a racing lap if they let them through we could get one racing lap through. right this is lap 56 that they are on now Hamilton the leader is now just approaching turn one on lap 56 this is the key lap those lapped cars need to be released on this lap Brundle has just said if they let them through we could get one racing lap that's true but it needs to be this lap he didn't specify that so we go from this point in time this is the key lap three laps to go nicholas latifi uh, is seemingly okay after that contact with the barriers around about 90 miles an hour 
uh, but he would have taken a whack and it's good to see uh, that he's okay. Sergio Perez coming into the pits again. So Max, I think they're retiring the car here. Perez into the pits for the fourth time. I didn't understand why, but I think they are retiring the car and yes, they're not going to be working on it. And that is the end of Sergio Perez's Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Checo, we need to retire the car. We need to retire, retire the car. Box. And for the okay, so we've now seen this as a diversion. Diverted your attention to the fact that Red Bull are retiring a car. This is the crucial lap. What needs to happen on this lap? Those lapped cars need to be released this lap. The track needs to be declared safe. Okay, it needs to be fully swept. Then the clerk of the course needs to make sure that that barrier that has been crashed into is safe okay and that it's capable of withstanding another impact and still reacting in the same way what's happening now really yeah box and lapped cars will not be allowed to overtake so we get an announcement and we get the banner on the screen saying lapped cars will not be allowed to overtake that's not in the regulations that's not a valid message the message in the regulations, which is the standard message, is overtaking will not be permitted because overtaking will not be permitted applies to all competitors. Nobody's allowed to overtake. Lapped cars will not be allowed to overtake. Well, does that, what does that mean? Does that mean if you're not lapped, you are allowed to overtake? But if you're lapped, you're not allowed to overtake? For how long? At what point can the lapped cars now begin overtaking if you restart? See, it doesn't make any sense. Because it's not a valid message. A message like that would not be part of any regulations. OK. And they go into which means. I'll tell you anything it means. It means. The track's not safe. And we know that the track's not safe because when these cars make it around to turn 14 and they show us the camera footage of those cars coming through this region of the track at turn 14, there are marshals in orange overalls still then departing the track, jumping over them barriers. So where they are now, the marshals are still on track. You can cut to Nicholas Latifi's car camera and you will see that there are marshals still on track at this point in time. Hence, you cannot release the lapped cars while there are men still on track sweeping up. But what does Sky Sports say about it? Not mandatory in the regulations, which leaves Verstappen with a... Lies. And then they embellish the lies by saying it leaves Verstappen with a lot to do. A lot of work to do then. So Mercedes will be Constructors' champions at the end of this race, as it's... They already are. No, he just said, as it stands, the moment Red Bull retired Perez, Mercedes were Constructors' champions. They went into that race with a 28-point lead in the Constructors' championship. You can only get a maximum of 26 points with one car. So even if both Mercedes crash out now, then they are still Constructors' champions. Stands at the moment, assuming that Hamilton and Bottas finish this race. The Drivers' Championship, though, is very much up for grabs. It's not up for grabs. The only way it can be up for grabs is if you get a lap racing. The only way you can get a lap raced is if those lapped cars are released and have all passed the leader in the safety car prior to lap 57 starting. This is what you've got left in order for all of those eight cars to be released. The last of those eight cars is Mick Schumacher, this white dot here in front of Sonoda and Gasly. Look at Gasly now. Gasly has almost caught the back of the pack. And you'll see where he is in relation to Norris, who's tucked up behind Hamilton. The lapped cars won't be allowed to overtake, which means... Which means it's not safe to release them, which means you continue lapping behind the safety car until it is safe. And if, those, if, if it's too late, because you can't do that on lap 56, it's a safety car finish. That there are plenty of cars in between Hamilton and Verstappen for Verstappen to fight his way through. No, not even possible. Uh, Norris, Alonso, uh, and also uh, Ocon and Leclerc and uh, Sebastian Vettel. No. Second time, those five cars have been listed. Ultimately, the five cars that get released. It's the second time you've had those five names listed to you. None of which are for position, of course. No. They're obliged to get out. None of which are for position, of course. They are all for position.
okay? Lapped cars will not be allowed to overtake. So you have 8th, 9th, 10th, okay? Which Perez is now retired. He's still in that running order. It's still showing, but he's actually retired, okay? So actually, you've got 7th, which is Norris, 8th, Alonso, 9th, Ocon, 10th is Leclerc, 11th is Vettel. None of which are for position. They're all for position. They're all for world championship points. Oh, but, but they're lapped cars, so they're not allowed to overtake each other. What? They just, what that, their, their result is fixed between now and the end of the race. Oh, oh, oh when, when are they allowed to overtake then? When, when are they allowed to race? Doesn't make sense, does it? Why? Because it's not how it is. It's not what the regulations are. It's all a fraud. It's all a fraud. Out of the way, but Lewis will be long down the road. That, that I suppose, is the comp... Embellishing the lies. Oh, because of this, Lewis will be long down the road. It can't even happen. But you then, you're inventing this scenario. Compromise that race control have made here by giving the best possible chance for racing to the finish rather than finishing behind the safety car, and they've decided the lap cars will stay where they are. I suppose this is the compromise that race control have made. I, I suppose the referee is breaking the rules for this purpose. In what sport would that be valid? I can see the referee on the pitch. I suppose what he's doing, he's, he's making a corrupt decision for this part outcome. Would that be acceptable in any other sport? Look at where Norris is now compared to Pierre Gasly. Norris, 12 seconds behind Gasly, is now the best part of a lap behind Gasly. This is why we have regulations. This is why we have procedures before we can go racing again. The safety car has knackered everything, OK, for everybody. There's a car that's crashed. That needs to be dealt with. The race has got to be effectively stopped. In doing so, it bunches everybody up like this. We can't enable it to ruin the race of, of people in that, in that race. It's ruined Norris's race in that he can no longer chase the car that he was previously trying to chase. No, that's why we have procedures. You carry out the procedures, you release those cars that have been held back in that safety car snake, and you give them a lap of the track to catch the back. Now we're all in the correct race order. Now all the advantages have, have disappeared. Now we go racing. That's how it works. You've never been told that. Cancel that. Lap cars will not be allowed to overtake. Yeah, of course. Typical decision. It's classic. I'm not surprised. <laughs> well... That message took place between turn five and turn six. F1 TV have cut out a lot, all of the gaps, okay? They've condensed that message down and they've played that to you, making it sound that Red Bull are being hard done by. The reality is, as they come by this scene now, they're just approaching turn 14, they will show you what's going on. There are men on track. There are marshals jumping over the barriers as these cars are going by this scene. Check out my other video if you don't, if you don't know that. If you don't know that, watch it. You will see the footage. That is the reason why the lapped cars could not be released. You will see when Verstappen's car is coming by turn 14, these marshals are still leaving the track. Look where Hamilton is at that point in time. The white dot of Mick Schumacher is the last lapped car. It's after those men have left the track. The clerk of the course will need to declare the track safe. That will then need to be conveyed to the drivers for them to start unlapping. They are not going to get past the leader in the safety car before the commencement of lap 57. You will see that then this means this is a safety car finish. Look, 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 I'll try and look at this objectively. We should get one lap of racing here. If we did, if we allowed the lap cars to overtake, we'd have no laps of racing to the chair. It's at this moment now that the, the um, marshals are departing the track. OK. So once the last marshal's off the track, it's going to take the OK from the clerk of the course and then the message given to all of these drivers with which to pass the leader and the safety car. It is not going to happen 
fifth before Hamilton gets onto lap fifty seven. This is a safety car finish. But listen to what Croft is telling you. What do Red Bull want? Do they want the chance or do they not? It's irrelevant. It's not in accordance with the rules of the sport. Checkered flag. So, so what do Red Bull want? And Max Verstappen and, and Giampiero Lambiassi as race engineer. Do they want the chance or do they want to finish behind the safety car with no overtaking? Because I think that is the decision that has come from race control. So, I'm going to be objective here. What do Red Bull want? I'm going to be objective. So what he's trying to do is trying to project to you. Oh, well, you know, what do they want in this situation? What do you think in the comments section? What would you like to see? It's not about what you would like to see. It's about what this is. It's a sport. These are the rules of the sport. This is what needs to happen. If it can't happen, this is what will happen. It's just a safety car finish. Oh, but what do Red Bull want? Do they want to be able to have a bit of a race to the finish or do they not? Let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's have a vote as to what Red Bull should have a chance. Or shall we just apply the rules of the sport? Lewis Hamilton crossing the start finish line right now. Where is Mick Schumacher? Oh, he's, he's the last lapped car. Hasn't got past. None of them have. This is a safety car finish because now we're going on to lap 57. Even if the lapped cars are released on this lap, lap 58 is that mandatory lap. And there is no overtaking permitted until they cross the start finish line on the end of that lap. That's the end of the race. That's the checkered flag. Safety car finish. And, and, and personally... This is the decision that gives them the best chance if they want it. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the regulation, uh, as I said, it's, we, they may allow the lap. Lies. It's nothing to do with they may. It is if it is safe to do so. The message will be given to them to do so. If it's not safe, it won't. And you'll continue lapping behind the safety car. Cars through. It's not mandatory, as I pointed out, but... As you point out, Crofty, there'd be no racing laps if they let no. the lap cars through. Because I... There you go. We're on lap 57. If they let the lap cars through, there'd be no let racing laps. There's no alternative to resume racing. You can't, re you can't resume racing like this. So it's a safety car finish. We're now on lap 57. The lap cars haven't been let through prior to the start of this lap. It is a safety car finish. I think the safety car will come in at the end of this lap. And there will be one racing lap. Brundle straight away. I think the safety car will come in at the end of this lap. And there will be one racing lap. Well, that's not in accordance with the rules and regulations of this sport. But that's a prediction you're making. And that is what you're priming the viewer to believe is being possible. You're lying about the sport to facilitate that narrative. Making people believe that that's possible. That's what you're doing. You're lying. They'll all get blue flags. I would imagine. And Crofty embellishes that with the blue flag notion. Once again, we are we are we are cementing that lie in your head with these possibilities. And now we get the interjection from F1 TV. Imagine. Christian to Michael. Yes, go ahead, Christian. Yeah, why, why, why aren't we getting these lap cars out of the way? Just give me, well, because Christian, just give me a second. Okay, my main, big one is to get this uh, incident clear. You only need one racing lap. Right, we don't know when that message took place. F1 TV choose to play it now. The regulations are that we're on lap 57. Even if they are released this lap, you have to do a safety car lap. It's a safety car finish. Everybody in the sport knows this. F1 TV, as the broadcaster, will know this. So why on lap 57 are you broadcasting that message, which is completely irrelevant, which are on lap 57? Because unless you could release those cars on lap 56... It's a safety car finish. But you chose to broadcast that message. Well, I, I assume 
Christian's talking about then, you know, get, getting the lap cars out of the way, not clearing uh, the uh, incident. Uh, I assume Christian's not bothered about clearing the incident. So we've deployed a safety car and Christian's not bothered about making things safe. Is that what you assume, Crofty? Thanks for that. Thanks for your valuable insight. Let me know what you think in the comments section, Crofty. Sausage. Away. Yeah, I mean, all of the cars in front of Max uh, will get blue flags and are duty bound to, to. That's the third time you've heard that lie. Not even possible. To get out of the way, but they're all in uh, a reasonable fight themselves, aren't they? I thought you said before none of them were for position, Martin. None of them are for position. Oh, but they're all in a reasonable fight themselves. So what are you telling us, Martin? What's real and what's not? Because you've contradicted yourself. Funny that. It's because you're lying all the way through to cement this narrative. Well, so here we go. Normally, you know... You... So here we go. Where, where are we going? You'd, you'd see the race leader backing up the pack a little bit when the safety car goes. I would imagine on this occasion, if we do get a lap, Martin, Hamilton will want to be disappearing off into the distance as fast yeah. as he can. Yeah, I don't see any way Verstappen can do anything with that. But indeed, is the safety car coming in this lap? We think it should do, could do. So, Martin, when they're going around here, turn two and three, I think the safety car will come in at the end of this, this lap and there will be one racing lap. Will the safety car come in like that? We think it could do, should do. Now this. Uh, is there any more debris to clear? Is there any more debris to clear? Well, we saw when they came round turn 14 last time, the marshals jumping over the barriers. And you're asking now, is there any more debris to clear up? What are you doing? You're disorientating everybody. Oh, we don't know. Is this going to happen? Is that going to happen? Oh, it could. anything could happen. Crazy. Era. But we're halfway round already. Race control are now saying lapped cars uh, to overtake the safety car. Uh, so Norris and Alonso and Ocon and Leclerc and Vettel to and overtake it's ending. it. And this it's ending. So the five get listed for the third time. And just as Crofty finished saying the fifth drive, Vettel. And it's ending. And it's ending. Wow. Well, you've predicted that when they were going through turns two and three. As we were coming down from eight and nine, you were going, oh, we think it could do, should do. Oh, and it's ending, and it's ending. Wow. And straight away, F1 TV play you, Toto Wolf. Ending. Wow. My good. Oh, you couldn't make it up, could you? You just couldn't have it queued up, ready to interject that, could you? The editing. Superb. Top job, lads. So, uh, there's confusion, but the safety car is coming. Who's confused? I'm not. Who's confused? Who's trying to make people confused? Coming in at the end of this lap. So, they, those back markers allowed to... Those back markers, what, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th and 11th, you know, 7th here that should be chasing sixth here yeah overtake the safety car and that has now left lewis but not the back markers which is daniel ricardo 12th 13th 14th mick schumacher they're not allowed to go that's never been done before hamilton and max verstappen michael this isn't right toto saying here's lines as well now because don't let's be let's be clear about this Mercedes had the resources to expose this. They have the resources to expose this. They never have. They've just shut up and they've taken their cut. Their cut of the bigger pot. They're all in on it. It has left Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen side by side. Hamilton will be ahead. Verstappen is... You look at this. McLaren. Their driver is disadvantaged. They didn't have the chance of challenging the Alpha Tauris. They should have protested to the FIA, to the steward, saying, you've, you've done the restart wrong. You've completely blocked off our chances. The Alpines, they too. You can pick, you can take two places in, in, a, uh, in a race. They didn't get the chance of competing for their top six places. You've got Ferrari, Carlos Sainz. 
he didn't have the chance of challenging Max Verstappen for second position in that race. Aston Martin, Lance Stroll, he's been held back. Sebastian Vettel, well, he, he's, he can't be bothered by then. All the other teams should have protested that restart. None of them did. Why? Because they're complicit. They are complicit. The whole sport grew in value. Their cut of that gets bigger. They all become more wealthy. So they shut up and they took the money. Is absolutely desperate to get on with this on that soft compound tyre. We're going to have one lap of racing to decide the championship in 2021. Hamilton has the advantage. Verstappen has the faster, fresher tyres. Hamilton has the advantage. Well, strange that you're telling us that, considering for the last four laps, you've told us just what a sitting duck Hamilton will be. What a great advantage to have when you know that you're the sitting duck. You've got a car that's on 44 lap old hard tyres and a car that's on the sort of tyres that you'd set your qualifying lap on. Oh, I wonder which, which car is going to be much faster than the other one on this lap. I wonder what the most likely outcome is of this manufactured lap, where we've broken the rules of the sport to specifically engineer one lap with the cars being in those situations. Well, that's called race fixing. That's result manipulation. That's breaking the rules to do that, okay, which is a crime. Sport fixing is a crime. It is fraud. Ahead of that taking place, you've got the commentary team lying about what was possible to take place. Not once did they tell you what had to be accomplished by what point in time for you to see any racing. They fed you a narrative. That narrative fed in with what F1 TV created to show you and what you, they made you hear with the radio messages between the teams and the drivers that they made you hear. I've done videos showing the stewards' appeal. That was entirely corrupt. Everything that took place afterwards, every programme created by Sky Sports F1 was validating it validating it, excusing it, and they've never once exposed the true reality. They've always focused on every other thing. They've thrown in there so many points to argue over in social media and virtually, they're not, none of them are relevant. They're not relevant, but they've caused warfare in social media, arguing between the different fans of the sport, thinking that they know something, okay, and they're all irrelevant arguments. They've all been fed to you to argue about by the media. That's what they've done. They've put people at war with each other so that the focus isn't on them. And they've all made money out of it. That's how disgusting this is. Anyway, that'll do for this one. There is loads more to come. Anyway, please like, subscribe, share this. Share this to other fans of the sport so they start seeing what's really going on. The media is conditioning you. The whole sport's corrupt, OK? From the top down, Liberty Media is corrupt. They've corrupted this sport. They've got the governing body that make the decisions, make the legislation under their thumb, making corrupt decisions to facilitate them getting richer. OK, which is what governments do. Apply this to your life. The government of your country is not run for the good of the people of the country. The decisions they make benefit billionaire businesses. They don't benefit you. Right. That is what's happening. The governing body has made dis decisions to benefit billionaire enterprises. It's broken the rules to do so. They then don't apply any consequences and they use the media to lie to you. To make you think, oh, yeah, it's all valid. Yeah, there's nothing you can do about it. But yeah, there's, there's ways in which that this could be interpreted to be OK. That's how filthy it is. Conditioning people to accept it and believe there's nothing that you can do to change this. This is just how it is. And I'm going to show you that that's not how it's going to be.